here on ABC Western Plains. It's about 20 past seven. And today, Dubbo Sale Yards will bring hundreds of thousands of dollars into the local community. But agents and Dubbo Regional Council remain divided on who should run the facility. The council is seeking expressions of interest for the lease or sale of the regional livestock market facility with local livestock agents gathering at Wednesday night's council meeting to voice opposition to the plan. Matthew Dickerson is the mayor of Dubbo Regional Council. Good morning, Mr Dickerson. Good morning, Jess. How are you going? I'm well, thank you, and I appreciate you joining us on the phone today. Um, The feedback on the expression of interest has not been positive from agents. So have they addressed this directly with you? Certainly. It's been quite good, actually. The agents have been contacting myself and councillors. We've had a number of people from the community who have contacted councillors, and that's just... Democracy is all about, that's what the process is all about, is making sure we hear from different people in the community. And agents certainly haven't been in favour of the sale or lease. And I've got to stress, Jess, that no decision has been made because some people have approached it that council is about to sell any day now. The whole service review process is to look at the way it's running now. We as councillors believe that it's, it's not operating in a way that's the best way for the community going forward. Now, that means that we might continue to run it in a slightly different model than how it runs now. But if we're exploring all options, exploring sale or lease are two other valid options to explore. And so that's really what we're doing at the moment. We're gathering information. We're not really in the decision-making process. We're gathering information is the process we're under now. So you are meeting with agents and having conversations with them? Probably more on the phone. It seems to be more yeah. contact, but certainly physically meeting with them as well. And we're receiving communication via email. There's certainly no lack of communication between agents, and not just agents, but people interested in the sale yards. There's obviously growers involved, there's carriers involved. So there are a variety of people who are involved in different ways with the sale yards who are certainly contacting councillors. And I'd encourage them to do that. That's what this beautiful, open democracy we've got is all about. Mm. The facility is one of the biggest in the state. So if privatisation is the preferred option, are you a guaranteed vote to support this or are you open to changing your mind? Well, th- there is no preferred option at the moment, Jess. That's the point that I'm making to all the people that I'm speaking to is that we're gathering information. We're looking at potential options for the sale and, and asking for expressions of interest for that, the same with the lease and the same with our internal operating model. It's been going for 74 years and in that time mm. there's been a number of changes of legislation, a number of changes of operation. We've had advice from the Office of Local Government about the way we're running it at the moment. So we're having various communication with government departments around legislation as well to make sure when we come out of this at the other end, what we're running is a very efficient, very modern sale yards and who is going to be owning and running that, I can't tell you at the moment because I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Now, agents have concerns that a sale could drive prices up for sheep and cattle and that in turn does impact the cost of living. So is this something that's being factored into the consideration? Well, we haven't actually gotten to that point yet, Jess, because we really are still gathering information. So when we get all that information and we look through what we receive from expressions of interest for sale and lease, and at the same time, we're also developing a model that we might look at because at the moment, the sale yards is not a money-making venture long-term for council, so it's being subsidised by the ratepayers. So we need to make sure that we've got a model to go forward. And if that means some price changes, then that will have to be where we run at. But again, that's we're not at that level of detail yet. Um, how, how much is it being subsidised? Well, if you look at the overall figures there, the day-to-day running of the sale yards makes money. So we come out in the black there in terms of the profitability. But the big issue, Jess, is the long-term asset renewals. It's a very capital expensive business. And just to give you a bit of an idea, we've generated at the moment $3.37 million in an internally restricted asset for asset renewal. So you could say we've made $3.37 million, but the estimations are that within the next 10 years, that sale yards needs $12.4 million spent on capital, on assets, and over the next 20 years, $46.1 million. So I can't give you an exact figure because in, say, the, within the next 10 years, how much have we built up towards that 12.4? Probably not enough. So that might be a $1 or $2 million injection needed from the ratepayers of Dubbo. But again, I'm, I'm, I don't have an exact figure for you in terms of the exact subsidy at this stage. Okay, so Councillor Shibley Chowdhury has already said he's not going to back any change. So what do you think the main things are that are going to help form your decision? Uh, obviously, we, we've, it's very early to me and for any councillor, and I'm not, I'm not having a go at Councillor Chowdhury here, but it's, to me it's way too early to have any 
decision in your mind based on the lack of information we have at this stage because we've still got EOIs open until the 14th of May, so there's still a few weeks for that, and we're still forming our own internal information. So the, the reality is we just don't have enough information to be able to make any decisions, and I, I certainly wouldn't go out and say anything about any decision I would make at this early stage. Mm. Look, while I've got you, Mr Dickerson, changes for the bulky waste collection were discussed on Wednesday night. Are there going to be changes to us throwing our junk out onto the street? Yeah, look, I'm really disappointed about this, Jess. We won't have the biggest trash and treasure going around in the, in the city for a 12-month trial. So we we did more than discuss changes. We actually are implementing a 12-month trial. So as you'd know, normally it's about a 13-week period that people put out their bulky waste collection and it becomes this trash and treasure. People go around and pick through other people's trash and I have a lot of people who tell me that the city looks a bit untidy during that three-month period. And so we've looked at different ways of doing it. And we looked at some other places in terms of the way they do their bulky waste collection service. And we looked at places like Tamworth, Central Coast, Wallandilly, Penrith, Lake Macquarie, a number of options where they do a booked pickup service. So in other words, you've got different periods throughout the year, you've got different zones. So that would be a, a part that we'll have to make sure we communicate with the public. And within those different zones, you've then got a week that you can ring and book your service to be picked up. So we think the rubbish will be out on the street for a a lesser period of time. So there'll be less of that rubbish around the community. The good news is it'll be the entire year, almost the entire year, we'll be able to do the collection, but you'll have zones. So you'll be able to go, for example, the first week in July might be your zone. And then the next time might be the first week in September might be your zone. And then when you're in that zone, you can ring and get that waste collected. It's actually a little bit cheaper for us, so we're saving a little bit of money on there. The service typically costs us around four hundred and eighty, four hundred and ninety thousand dollars for the year. This should drop it to about four hundred and forty thousand. But it's also that process of being able to have a better looking city without that rubbish flowing around within the community for that long period of time. Mr. Dickerson, I appreciate your time very much. We've been speaking to Matthew Dixon, Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council. Appreciate you taking our call this morning. Thank you very much, Jess. Take care. ABC Western Plains, we are coming up to local news. Uh, Do you know when the mayor said, as you'd know, Jess, there's lots of, you know, has he spotted me on a ring cam ferreting through people's belongings at night? Am I on the Dubbo community page? It wasn't me because I always cover my face. Just kidding. I would never do that. Uh, But, look, interesting changes to the way that we get rid of our junk. Mm. We're coming up to local news.